Hi everyone, welcome back to this being my second video about my little uh, Super Nintendo reader for USB. There's been a lot of stuff going on lately and uh, I'm just going to show you some of the things that have changed. There are three things that are most important I would say. First of all, we've got a new hardware. So, as you probably remember, this is what it used to look like. And now we have this neat little circuit board with the processor right on it and the connector right next to it. And um, there's a di second difference, and that is that we have another connector on the back side. And that bring us, brings us to change number two, which is that we can now read Sega Mega Drive games or Genesis as it was labeled in the United States. And uh, why don't we go ahead and just try if it works with this cartridge of Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition, whatever. Plug it in and see what happens. So, new drive showing up. So, uh, this is a preliminary version of the firmware, so we still get a bunch of weird characters in the file name here but I'm going to remove this in a future version. For now I have to manually rename the file to something that uh, the emulator can handle. So I'm just going to call it streetfighter.bin and now I can open it with gens and that's an emulator for the Sega Genesis. So the game has been loaded. Let's just make it twice the size. And here's the Sega logo. So we can just uh, go ahead and watch the opening titles. I'm not going to play now because I would make a fool of my, out of myself. Um, this is just to show that the thing actually loads and we can go and uh, play Street Fighter 2 from the game card. Okay, enough of that. There's been a lot more changes too. So, um, just remove this one and uh, try a bunch of Super Nintendo games again. This is The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. And um, let's just plug some games in and see if they work. By the way, these are PAL cartridges, so these are for the European Super Nintendo system, but it doesn't really matter because the difference is only in the software, not in the hardware. So as long as the emulator can handle it, uh, everything should be fine. Japanese versions and, and all. So this is Zelda, and let's just see what we have here. And of course, this is now bad checksum, so something went wrong, obviously. To reset it again, but this shouldn't be that big a deal. Check some okay. All right. So um, this is the Legend of Zelda, and here's something more that's new about the new hardware version. We're now actually able to um, load and save game states from and to the cartridge as the games allow it. So here in this case I borrowed this from a friend and he used to play a lot. So we have here uh, a state with number 69, whatever that means in this case. And I can just go ahead and load it and continue right in the middle of the game wherever he left it. Okay. So what more do we have? What's Zelda. Here's another one. Uh, that's Yoshi's Island, also the European version, and it has these additional, con uh, these additional connectors for the Super FX chip, uh, which the game uses, but we're not going to need it because that's being emulated anyway. So we're only interested in the ROM data, so I plug it in, and what happens?
these games are really old, so in some cases you may have to plug them in and out again. Well, it still doesn't work. What's wrong here? I don't know. Actually, this connector is pretty crappy, and the final version of this uh, is negative USB will have a proper game connector that's similar to the one that's actually being used in the real Super Nintendo console. So now let's click on this thing and start Yoshi's Island. And the checksum is okay, which is good. And so this game works as well, obviously, even though it's using the Super FX chip. Actually, I haven't found a single game that didn't work so far, but I haven't tested many of them yet, so it might happen that some don't really work. But it hasn't happened so far. So, one final thing. As I said, we can use the, uh, the possibility to save games on the cartridge, and for that I'd like to go back to Super Mario World and um, show you how that actually works. So here we have the Super Mario World ROM file, and I can start up the game in the emulator. And I played a little earlier on, so we have this game state here at 58 levels. And I'm, now I'm just going to play a little to show you um, how I can save the game state back to the cartridge. So first of all, I'm going to go and get myself a feather here. Now I'm going to the ghost house, because that one has a secret exit, and whenever I find the secret exit, I can go and save the game state again, which is what I'm going to do now. So I'm going up here, and uh, taking the secret exit, here it is. And now that I've finished this level, I'm going to be asked whether I want to save this game. And, uh, of course, I want to do that. Continue and save. And now comes the fun part. So, let's take this cartridge now and plug it into the proper Super Nintendo. Power it on. And grab a gamepad. And now it turns out we have this game set at 59 levels, which is 58 plus the one I just played. And I can just grab the gamepad and go on from here. So here's my Yoshi. Uh, whatever. 